today I'm unboxing my framework laptop. I bought the do-it-yourself edition in batch 3. It finally has shipped and this is the original unboxing. So I'm picking up the power cord. This is going to be the package of all the different modules and then the main laptop. Looks like the seal's broken, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and open these all up. So these are the original packaging. I've got all of the modules except for the one terabyte that I heard that was overheating from the forms, but I also picked up the Wi-Fi module that Framework has and recommends. So let's start with the unboxing of our power cable. So with this, you've got your regular power cable, you've got a USB-C 90 degree angle on one side, and then you've got your charging port here. Nice thing is that these are all removable cables and replaceable, which is great. Now when we're to the laptop itself. Pull it out. It's got some heft to it. Got some stickers, a manual. You've got the screwdriver. Check to see if there's anything else in the box. Very economic boxing. And then here's my take first time holding this thing. Ooh. That is a pretty look. And the all aluminum case feels fantastic. Now here you can see the four different module slots that are all USB-C Thunderbolt ports that we're gonna be able to hot swap, which is one of the awesome things about this laptop. And again, here is the tool that you get sent with it to help you actually open the box. You got your sponger on this side, and then on the opposite side is a flippable screwdriver. One with like a hex head and one with a Phillips screwdriver. You also get the quick start manual in a bunch of different languages, and then some stickers. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. So love the screen ratio. And if you look at the top here, you can actually see it comes with a webcam and microphone at the top side. The aluminum feel to this is just sleek as all get out. Reminds me very much of my MacBook Pro 2011. Here are the tabs to be able to turn on and off both the webcam and the microphone. If you see red, that means that they are disabled. I cannot get over how good this finish feels with the cool touch of the aluminum. It's pretty awesome. So this opens up all the way. I'm just trying to get things in frame here a bit so you can see everything. This is actually a fingerprint reader that you can enable in Linux and on Windows. It does not work out of the box, but that's not a problem. So let's get to the assembly. If we close this up, let's flip this bad boy over. So I also bought the RAM from Newegg, same exact type that they recommend on their site. So it's 3200 and it is 32 gigs of RAM on a single SODIM. I also have two different NVMe options. Uh, the first one is the 60 the SN750 Western Digital Black. So this is a PCIe 3, which is supposed to give you better battery life. And then the fastest one that they support and that they sell on their site is the Western Digital Black Gen 4 MVME SN850. And it's supposed to be up to 7,000 read speed and 5,000 and change write speed. This is fast, one of the fastest on the market, so I'm looking forward to getting this thing installed. Also bought the Intel Wi-Fi from Framework. That's the one that they come with, the AX210. It's the Intel Wi-Fi chip. This works out of the box with uh, Fedora 35, which is great. I am personally a Linux guy myself, so I'm gonna be installing Linux on this first versus Windows. But let's go ahead and grab our screwdriver and 
undo the five screws that hold this thing together. One of the things I love about this laptop is that the screws are all captive, so they won't actually pull out. So they've got a little plastic tab on the other side that's holding them in place. And it only takes five of them to separate the laptop. So two in the front and then three on the back part of the device. After you've undone the five screws, you're going to flip the laptop over and you're going to open it up fully. Screen goes all the way flat and then we're going to lift from the back part nearest the screen and gently, gingerly lift up the keyboard. This is being held in place via magnets. The nice thing is that they gave us a nice long cable to attach the keyboard and touchpad to the motherboard. If you see the orange tab on the right hand side, there's a little loop, pull up on it and it comes off really easily. Then just carefully set this off to the side for now as where we can actually see the inside of the laptop for the first time. The great thing is everything is beautifully labeled. I'm sure if you've watched other videos, you've seen all the QR codes. We'll actually start using these in a little bit but we can pretty clearly see where our MVME is going to go here. So we're gonna start with that. We're gonna install the fastest one, which is the PCIe 4, going back to that Western Digital MVME drive. So we'll go ahead and unbox it and slap it on in here. You'll need to make sure to insert it all the way into where you don't see any gold pins left. If you need to wiggle it back and forth a little bit, you can. Then make sure to grab that screw out that's already currently sitting there in the M2 slot. Pull the screw out, place the M2 drive down, put the screw back in place, which will then hold it in place. Once this is installed, uh, go ahead and tap that. If it's still wiggling or you can still hear it uh, tap, uh, screw it in just a little bit more to where it, when you tap it, it's not making a clicking sound. Just don't over tighten it. Then you have your two different RAM slots. Uh, for our RAM slot, we're gonna put it in RAM slot zero, or in this case, the first RAM slot that you should be using, which is on the far right hand side. Once you pop the package, this is using DDR4. And again, when you're installing components like this, make sure that you don't see any of the gold connectors or the pins. Once that's square in place, I'm just reseating it here to where it's all good. Then you snap it down, just like that. It makes that nice clicking sound. From there, let's go ahead and install our Wi-Fi and now this, I see a little piece of metal is just kind of sitting there. And I'm not sure how this is supposed to go in. So what we're going to do is just unscrew this part. And then we're going to bring out our phone and scan the QR code. From here, we're actually taken to Framework site. And it says, hey, this is where all your content lives. You can scan any one of these QR codes and we'll jump you to the right section. Some of this is still being built. So we're going to go over to the manual. From the manual the first time set up and we're going to scan on down because we picked up the do-it-yourself edition we'll click here and then it's going to walk us through each one of the steps to set up the laptop for the first time so we got this far without looking at the manual let's see how far we did okay looks like unboxing yes that's fine unscrewing the bottom great the captive screws are fine install the MVME, then install the RAM. Ah, here is the Wi-Fi. So we want to unscrew this little metal piece. Then from there, there are two plastic sleeves on top of the antenna connectors. You want to carefully pull the clear plastic sleeves off of the cables. 
After those are both pulled off, you're going to grab your Wi-Fi chip and you're going to insert it into the laptop. Now, depending on how easily you're able to go through and attach this, it took me about two minutes to go through and do so because they are itty bitty connectors. Um, do verify on the manual that you're doing it correctly. Um, I'm using the Wi-Fi card that came with or the one that they recommend. So your wiring may differ if you grab a different Wi-Fi card. Make sure that none of the brass is touching each other from the two antennas and then make sure the wires are spread out enough from each other but also not touching the speaker. There's this nice little channel that you can go through and put them in and then you put on your metal piece, you screw it in, and again, just verify that the wires are in the right slots there. Make sure it's not touching the speaker. And we are pretty much good to go. Now, one other thing that the manual goes through and says is that some of the batches had issues with the touchpad and or keyboard connector not being connected correctly. So you just need to flip up the piece, re slide it back in and then relock it down. Here we just use our little sponger tool to lift up and then try to push it back inside. Which looks like ours is already fully inserted so it's stable there. Let's go ahead and reattach this. We're going to grab that plug to plug back into the motherboard. Nice thing is this is a nice long cable so compared to other laptops I've worked on in the past it's pretty easy to work with. So when that's in place, put the front of your laptop with the touchpad into place first. Again, it'll be sucked into place by magnets, which is great. Snaps down pretty easily. And then close the laptop, flip it back over again. And it's time to go ahead and screw in your laptop with those five screws. Okay, now it's time to start filling in these four module slots. So let's go ahead and do an unboxing of all the different options that are out there. I did pick up one of each of these at least because, uh, I mean, dongles, right? I wanted to make sure I can actually use this thing to the fullest capacity. The only thing I did not pick up one of is the expansion card for the one terabyte because I read on the framework forms that they were overheating. So let's go ahead and check this guy out. This is the micro SD card. They're in clean little packages, so you can pull the tab on the back and then you pull up and there's in these little sleeves. You're able to flip them over. There's your micro SD card information there on the back. You can scan as well. And these are all USB-C connections going into the laptop. Then you have the 258 gigabyte external drive which is USB 2.1 or 2.2 I'll have to find out and I'll put here in the the video and the read write speeds on these are pretty decent if you are a Windows user as of this date and time of November 6th you cannot install Windows on an external USB device Linux you can however so here's the HDMI Pull it on out, pretty standard, we're good to go. Again, the QR codes and you can go through and scan any of this for more information later on. Packaging's pretty simple. Hey, look, just our standard USB-A. Pull your tab. And we're good to go. Everything looks pretty straightforward. We've got a couple more to go after this. Now this one is the USB-C, so it's literally just an expansion card coming, plugging into the laptop and just passing through USB-C. The awesome part about this laptop is that it does not matter where you have a USB-C, uh, you're able to charge from it. So on the left side, on the right side, on the front or back, doesn't matter. You can also get a display port, which is a full display port uh, external card here, 
once you pop this guy open, there is your full display port, which is pretty awesome. So with that, you've got the unboxing of all of the current offerings for expansion cards as of November 20th, 2021. Now, let's decide which ones we're going to put into the laptop for today to get started. Okay, we're going to use the USB-C in the top left-hand corner. When I'm setting this thing up, it'll be on my left-hand corner, even though I inserted it onto my right. Then I'm just going to grab a full USB type A and I'm going to plug it over here again on the left hand side of the laptop so when I flip it up we'll use the HDMI here on the right side and well as the last one to fill in the blank we're going to use the micro SD card slip it on here on the right hand side so we'll take these other two modules and set them off to the side for now. Go ahead and clean up our boxes. And let's flip this guy over. With that, you've got the complete unboxing of the framework batch three. And on our next video, we'll get started on installing an OS. Thanks for coming and watching.